Well, I've got a bit of a fun day. I've got Bryony coming over from uh, London Aquatic Vet. Uh, she's got a new, uh, so I should probably fill in a few blanks actually. She, part of our quarantine process has always been uh, testing when it comes to viral stuff, KHV and CEV cop gamma virus, which relates to sleeping disease, the real nasty form of sleeping disease. Uh, yeah, we we do PCR testing, which is the method where typically we had to send fish away up to the lab. They have to be killed to do PCR testing, unfortunately. Quite brutal in that sense, but it's a necessary evil in my opinion. This stuff's advancing all the time, however, and having a chat with Bryony recently, she's made me aware that there's a PCR test now with incredible accuracy, developed by a company who is absolutely specializing in this area with fish, uh, which just allows us to take, like, a, like the COVID tests that were up the nose, this one's in the gill, and boom, we, we get our results. So she's coming over today to show me through that, talk me through it, and I'll share that with you. Uh, see what else she's, she's got to throw in the mix. There's a couple of fish as well I've got. I want to try some fin stitching on. I'm uh, going to get her to do it because I am no quite valuable fish that have had some nasty splits for some reason. And I normally let fins grow out, but I'm just finding more and more it's, it's the bigger splits, it's getting harder to get the natural shape back at the end of it. So I just want to see now with my own eyes how they grow out being stitched together uh, what that process is involved so yeah i don't know how she'll feel about me filming that stuff we'll, we'll wait and see but yeah should be an educational day on top of that ladies and gents let me go and show you what else i've been up to so in here two new batches of the tosai first and foremost these are part of the saito tosai that have come in you guys know i absolutely adore this breeder and what he does phenomenal mix of stuff in here uh, two different sizes so we're having a sort through and these are actually going to be the first launch or part of the first launch of our tosai boxes for this year which is going to allow you to get very very well priced fish uh, in a sort of mix and match format as well because there's a few other bits to go with these they're looking absolutely fantastic there's a killer mix of stuff in there from all these quirky bloodlines that he's got so yeah, that's going to be coming up via our Koi Online platform. If you're not in that, I'll give it the usual plugs. Links to our WhatsApp group and website are all in the description. And then, it's grow out event time. It's uh, actually the Eeltsaur is over here was the last one that we've done. That's as good as finished now. Fantastic results, it really is. I can't wait to share that in depth with you. But Takano Sankis already crazy. These are 25 to 30 centimeter tosai already. Not quite got the body mass yet. I'm working on that. But these are going to be coming up again via a Koi Online event. It's going to be a ticketed event as well, where you're actually going to be able to come to a venue that we've got and select the fish on the day with myself and the team. And they'll come back here for a three month growing period after that. I went through these yesterday, there's some fantastic potential in here, there really is. This batch way better than last year's in my opinion. And I think by the time, realistically, 10 cm should be easily be achievable over that period, if not a bit more, which you're going to be looking at a 35 to 40 centimetre fish out of that. Then I've got some small ones in that net, it's a problem for me then, way smaller than them, so I've got to find a new home for those today yeah plenty of cool stuff coming up uh got a few bits to do now in office i'll bugger off and do that might by the end of the video as well be able to share some really cool with you that's really going to advance things here and the way we're doing it i just yeah i have an habit of not stopping you know you've got to keep pushing and doing this stuff and this for the grow out events and just general organization here and security for you guys when you're buying fish and leaving them it's going to be seriously cool but let's uh we oh, have to wait till the end and see right we're to it brian is here as you can see and first bit we're on to is this new and i'm going to let brian tell you all about it this new pcr test uh it's actually pretty broad spectrum as i'm told but we're mainly looking at khv and cev 
as a part of the screening in our quarantine regime. So enough of me blabbing about it. I'll flip the camera around and uh, let Bryony show you, tell you about it, and then I'll show you taking show you taking one of the samples as well. Okay, Go so yeah, it. we're going to be testing for KHB and CEB today. Um, essentially, we've got these little vials here and a swab. Um, we're going to take a swab from the gill arches, preferably the second gill arch back. Um, so this is a non-lethal test, which means we're not having to euthanize any of these fish. This can be run on a sedated live fish, so it's a huge advantage for us because we're not having to euthanize any of the stock. That's so, mass massive for us, that. Yeah, it's yeah, just nice in general, isn't it? I think it's, especially in high-end koi, no one wants yeah, to have to put one and sleep to get an answer. Your, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So non-lethal, we can run this usually comes back within three to five days. Um, we're going to be looking specifically for KHB, but you can run it for various other pathogens. You can be looking for bacteria, you can be looking for viruses. Um, so it's quite, oh, you can do bacteria as well? You can do bacteria as well. As long as, we've wow. got, as long as the lab have the DNA to match it to, essentially. Yeah, we're good. You didn't tell me that, bit. That's... Oh. that's... <laughs> Surprise! No, yeah. no, no, because obviously I, I, I ramble on about bacteria all the time. Yeah. but as a way of potentially so step this through somebody could potentially get one of these from you and do some initial screening without you potentially having to come on site yes potentially i guess this one this is a very this is mostly used for viral dna yeah kind of preservative you can pick up various things like Eremona salmon and cider using this stuff. Yeah. But really, I mean, yeah, it, to be honest, this specific preservative is viral only. Okay. But yes, you, you know, these could be sent out and we could be looking for various exciting yeah. there we go folks we're on it so uh yeah we'll uh, get a fish in a bowl now and have a look then folks these are anaesthetized so don't panic <laughs> okay let's go grab the first one shall we okay so we've got the first one here so a nice thing with this test as well is we can actually have multiple swabs per test which will help us get a broader spectrum of testing across the batch. So how's that for you? I'm all for a bit of that. No mortalities to get the test results. We can actually broaden out the spectrum of the testing per batch as well. Happy days. Right, just so people know, a bit of background about you, what you can offer people. What you can maybe offer people who aren't around London yeah, as well. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so I am a mobile fish vet, so I go out to people's homes and tanks. We don't need koi and goldfish. Um, because it's mobile, it's super useful because I can actually see the aquatic environment, get hands on with the fish. So generally, home visits are the best for fish. Yeah. Um, for people further away, I do offer telephone consultations. Um, this is usually better for kind of continuity based issues, to kind of track you through feeding. Yeah. Um, winter management for example, water quality issues. Um, sometimes I can um, direct from particular disease issues, um, so particularly winter sickness, like cold shock, um, bacterial ulcers, potentially I can kind of signpost you to useful things to try, but that can be a little bit more complicated. Topic. Obviously that's been a big one, haven't it? We, yeah, me and Bryony are having a lot of chats about this and mainly looking at the diagnostic part of it before it gets to the point of needing a vet, but yeah. It's complicated stuff, Ryan, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and it's very multifactorial with all of these ulcer cases. There's so many factors that play into what has caused these ulcers in the first place. So, water quality, whether you've just moved a couple of fish in, parasites, temperature. And so, all of these things have to be assessed to get the best outcome. So, yeah. that's why it's not a clear cut. What will, you know, I can't say try this, try that, and that's definitely going to work. There are so many things that we need to address. Yeah. Um, in terms of things to work. And hearing it from a professional's mouth, not that I'm putting you on the spot mm -hmm. though, the likes of the Dr. Deaths and people yeah. like that who are out there chucking antibiotics around willy nilly. Yeah. These people should be it. strung up, shouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, a lot of the time you think going straight for an antibiotic is the, you know, the, the treatment to go for and it's going to fix everything. But in reality, if you've not got everything else fixed, you know, you're, you're you know, a good temperature, you've not got your water quality fixed, the antibiotic won't be okay. Um, and equally, you know, you need to be dosing these fish according to body weight, not just by looking at them. Yeah. Using, not just one injection, multiple injections, yeah. you know, finishing the course. So there are so many ways 
to do antibiotics in the correct way, so it just has to all happen in a... And just because I always way. forget it, it's London Aquatic Vet in the door yeah, to buy you. Yeah, And I will post a link in the description. So there you have it. I've known Bryony for a while now. She does a fantastic job, very, very credible. And well worth getting in touch with. I'm going to continue working together on this project to try and get a process, a cost efficient, simple process set up for uh, identifying bacterial disease before you need vet intervention to get the stuff you need to treat it and make sure it's actually that. So that said, I think I should probably show you what else we've been up to guys because for our operations and everything we're doing moving forward and what this is going to be able to do, I think it's a bit of a game changer. So uh, let me show you this. So imagine this scenario, you've got a fish growing with us. It's something like a shear up sorry that pain does last year that can change a lot. You just want to definitely know it's your fish. What better way than to do this? There you go, ladies and gents. So from now onwards, we will know that fish 9560000185192 belongs to a certain person game changing absolutely game changing Obviously, i've known they've been on with it in japan for a while i thought it was about time i got clued up and uh yeah just for what we're doing what this can actually open up in regards to grow on events and all the rest of it i think it's going to be amazing so there we go cannot stop got to keep pushing keep learning as well can't beat a bit of that oh so, uh yeah on to the next job i suppose